Napalm. Anthony Lloyd, yeah. Um, so Vietnam, um, the press clearly played a large role in turning the American public against the war. But, but I think we also need to remember that war was both immensely costly. US took 58,000 dead in Vietnam, compared to a t less than a tenth of that in, in Iraq. And secondly, there was a draft. And so it affected people across the country. It's a dirty reality of, of the Iraq-Afghanistan wars. Even though we've had 2 million American uh, soldiers and Marines and, and airmen uh, who've served in both those theaters, they, they, they are largely invisible at home. They come from mostly uh, less affluent states. Um, you know, you meet a lot of guys from Texas, Mississippi, um, you know, Montana. Um, you won't meet a lot of people from Connecticut and New York uh, in, 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 the, in the military these days. Um, they don't have much of a constituency. And the press has, so I think in, in Vietnam, the, 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 if you talk to veterans, one of their most bitter memories is that, that their service was not valued back home. The war fell into such disrepute that when a, a veteran came home, they would, the first thing they do, they get out of uniform um, because they didn't want to be identified. And, you know, they'd wear a hat because of the, the haircut. Um, today in the United States, uh, veterans will wear their uniforms. They will get ushered first onto airplanes. You know, it's, it's kind, of, kind of an honor. People will come up and say, thank you for your service. And these are even people that don't support the Iraq war or the Afghanistan war, particularly the Iraq war. Um, there's a different tone in the United States today. Um, compared to Vietnam when, when it, it, it fell into disrepute and it, it was touching families all across the country. There were draft dodgers in Canada. You know, it, was, it was a national phenomenon, which is, frankly is not today. Um, the second part of your question was, um, what came before war junkies? You had, you had three, three parts of your question. Embeds. Oh, the embeds, yes. Um, yes, the embeds, so as I, as I tried to, to talk about um, this, this phenomenon of being stuck in an embed. It's quite clear that, that, that in large parts of Iraq and most of Afghanistan, uh, you couldn't move unless you were with US forces. It was simply too dangerous. Um, but by virtue of being in that situation, you were uh, very limited in your access to the local population, particularly in Iraq, less so in Afghanistan. And, and with the Marines, they, they, you know, they got down and dirty and they uh, they sort of had quite a bit of contact with the Afghans, but in Iraq it was, it was really, you were kind of, it was us and them. Um, in Vietnam, journalists, and Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Bob, uh, uh, expert on, 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 on the Vietnam War, journalists I think were given the equivalent rank of a major. Um, so you could go into any air base in Vietnam and you would be upgraded on the wait list for the next helicopter or whatever it might be uh, to the level of a major, which is pretty senior. You know, you're, 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 you're above captain, just below colonel. Um, 
that's, that was a, a, a privilege that the journalists had, and they used it, and they would get around the country. Um, today, you, you certainly don't have you know, rank of a major, and you pretty much you, you go on the space available basis. So it's, it's a very different relationship between the, the journalist and, and, and the media, and you know, the journalist and, and the military. The, the, the military, I think, felt that they'd been abused in the Vietnam War, and it's, it was a pretty easy target to say, well, the press lost the war. Well, not really. I mean, it's a much more complicated story than that. But, but you know, the press was an easy, an easy target. Um, to get to the war junkie phenomenon, there, there are clearly people who, uh, who are war junkies. Um, Anthony Lloyd, literally. I mean, he was a self-confessed heroin addict, and he sort of balanced his, his enthusiasm for war with his enthusiasm for the opiates that he was pumping into his system. And he, he doesn't make any secret about that. Um, war is exciting. It's, it's very exciting. And uh, a, a certain amount of danger certainly is, is very alluring to a certain personality type. But I think part of it is, 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 is something that, that I had. Um, and I still miss, miss it to a certain extent. But it's, 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 a, it's a dangerous drug to get onto because you then, you then start to veer from the witnessing that I talked about to the voyeurism. And I, 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 I have some friends who, who I think generally <laughs> They, they veer a bit too much to the voyeuristic side. A lot of them are photographers. Uh, photographers are the most crazy of all the war correspondents because they have to get closest. As a writer, you can see a bombing from a mile away and the bomb, and then you can go afterwards and you can interview the survivors. You can work out, put piece together what happened. As a photographer, you kind of have to be there because if you miss the moment, you don't have a, a shot. And so I have some sympathy with these, these guys because they take greater risks. But there are some photographers, and I'm not going to name people here, but, but, but who I think veer towards the voyeuristic side. I think that's why we have editors, uh, because some of, the, the, some of the, the pictures that I've seen from some of my colleagues uh, don't, don't belong in print. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a hairy issue. But yes, war has always been that way. It's attracted a certain personality type who who kind of thrive in the, in the danger. And, and you'll find a lot of people who, and, and the military is the same. Plenty of soldiers and Marines will tell you the best time of my life was when I was in combat. And they, they never find something to replace that when they, when they get home. And hence, we have these problems of readapting to a civilian life.